I kind of want to uh, show you guys this video from AJ Plus. Uh, it it's 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 a ten minute clip, and and we'll go through it, and I'll kind of le- you know comment along <clears throat> the ten minutes. Some of the segments are going to be a little long, so just just a heads up. Some of the seg- some of the little chunks are going to be a little bit long. Um, but this this is a this is a, a pretty good uh, pretty good breakdown of of what's going on and and does a really good job of explaining things. Uh, so let's do it. You're a well known anchor yeah, at a major like, American uh, news network uh, covering an ongoing story. That, can you guys hear that? Did you guys were you guys able to hear that? Is that just my headphones that are fucked up? I have it up. No, I can I can hear it, but it it didn't come through. Could you guys hear that? Let me know if you could if you could hear what was playing. I'll play it again. Sorry about an ally country engaged. Your well-known anchor at a major American news network covering an ongoing story about an ally country engaged in a military assault against... Let's try this again. If not, I'll try to read the subtitles of it and go from there. Your well-known anchor at a major American news network covering an ongoing story about an ally country engaged in a military assault against a population in a territory it illegally occupies. In the midst of this, a story breaks that your allies' military has now bombed a building that houses journalists. Is your reaction going to be dismay, condemnations, demands that journalists and other civilians be protected? Or is your response going to look a lot like CNN's Brian Stelter's? I think the obvious question that comes to mind is, what were the Israelis supposed to do? If they are sure, if they had intelligence that can be vetted, that Hamas was using these news bureaus as a shield, as a hiding place, what were the Israelis supposed to do? Covering So, <laughs> okay, so this is where I want to start. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. J- uh, Sleepy Jay is asking if it's a mixer problem. I'm not sure. I would have to double check. I think I think this might be my computer problem. I'm I'm gonna have to figure that out later, uh, which is which is double frustrating for the day. Anyway, um, as long as you guys can hear it and I can read the subtitles, I'll be able to kind of talk about what what I wanted to talk about with this. But uh, but I I do love this statement that that uh, uh, <laughs> Brian Seltzer made. We was like, what were we supposed to do? Hamas was in those buildings. You know what I'm saying? You know, they were it. They were using the buildings as a as a shield. What were we supposed to do? I don't know. Maybe don't blow up journalists. <laughs> like, isn't that would that be the would that be the logical thing to do? Is like, okay, if 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 you think this quote terrorist group, you know, which it's not, it's it's the it's the government of that country. If this terrorist group is in this news building, um, then why would like why would you think blowing that up is the right thing to do? And not only that, but they gave people a warning. So like if you're going to give people a warning, don't you think that Hamas is also going to get that fucking warning? And they're like, hey, we should probably leave because they're going to blow this up. Like, what are you even like? What are you trying to do? Oh, we'll we'll get rid of these buildings so that Hamas can't hide in these buildings anymore. Like that's still crazy. Like you're ruining, you're you're destroying people's lives. You're basically saying we're going to do the exact same thing we claim these terrorist groups are doing, but we're going to do it, so it's okay. Like what kind of backwards ass logic is that? It doesn't. It make it makes zero zero fucking sense. Anyway, we're. So we're going to keep going on the uh, on the old video here. Israeli occupation and apartheid seem to be excruciatingly difficult for many major media outlets, especially here in the United States. There's a lot of sanitization of language, whitewashing of the situation, and an erasure of the real power imbalance that exists between Israelis and Palestinians, even an erasure of Palestinian humanity. Do you support the protests, uh, the violent protests that have erupted in solidarity violent with protests. you and, and, and other families in your position right now? We've seen this type of rocket fire during major operations and major wars. Violence spiraling out of control in the Middle East. Fires in Tel Aviv. Military strikes. A neighborhood in Gaza. That began as a land dispute in Jerusalem. Since May 11th, the Israeli military has been bombing Gaza. The airstrikes followed an escalation of ongoing Israeli state violence. When okay, so, <laughs> so we got there. 
Uh, I do like that last guy. He kind of, he kind of struggles to say Gaza, that there were attacks in Gaza. Like he pauses and before he says it. It's almost like, am I saying the right thing? Am I gonna if I say if I say this word, am I gonna get fired? Right. But here's the thing that they don't talk about. The the thing that they don't talk about is and this is something Abby Martin has covered and and there's there I, I remember watching a, a, one of the videos um, a while back and it's basically Israelis just talking shit on Palestinians like they legitimately hate them they think that they're they think that they're inferior like they don't cover that they don't address that they don't talk about that right like like that's how deep rooted that level of pro israeli propaganda is and and something i forgot to mention last week when we talked about this topic is um and, and again i think this is this is this is from an abby martin interview is uh, abby martin and mike mike prisoner interview is they um they talk about how the star of david is incorporated into israel's flag so that the nation itself is connected with the religion so criticizing the nation means you're criticizing the religion uh, and again that's that's how deep rooted the propaganda is that's how much they thought about this stuff um and it kind of kind of shows you like there's always been th that was the plan all along the plan was uh settler colonialism to to come in and 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 displace these people and create a uh, create a theocracy, create, create a Jewish theocracy. It also gives you, like, associating a, a religious icon with a national flag does, does say theocracy. I, I mean, I remember, uh, I think it's Pakistan. Pakistan has the, the, the crescent moon and star, right? Which is Islam's religious iconography. And I remember people using that as a, uh, as a way to be like, oh well, that that's why you know that they're terrorists is because they they are they are Muslim, um, they're they're showing how much how much they are a Muslim country. So like they they only Muslims get rights in Pakistan because of their flag, right? It's kind of the same thing. Uh, where again, the 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 differences, the critiques on Israel versus the critiques on a Muslim nation like Pakistan for doing virtually the same thing. To, uh, using religious iconography as a way to 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 kind of brand nationalism you know so uh it, it's but where are they going to talk about that sort of stuff corporate media is not going to talk about that sort of stuff right it, it, nobody in the mainstream is bringing that kind of stuff up because they don't want to and they don't care so we'll go to the ne the, the next part this, this part's kind of short I'll, I'll rewind it just a little bit just so uh, we can start where we needed to there. As a land dispute in Jerusalem. Since May 11th, the Israeli military has been bombing Gaza. The airstrikes followed an escalation of ongoing Israeli state violence when worshippers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem were attacked by Israeli police during the last days of Ramadan. And this was following ongoing Palestinian resistance against the forced and illegal displacement of Palestinian families from the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood in occupied East Jerusalem to make room for more Israeli settlers, a situation that isn't unique to this neighborhood. Almost and again, America is fine with this, right? Because America is fine with gentrification. They're fine with displacing groups of people as long as they can, you know, redevelop it and get some rich people in there. Get some capitalism moving up in there. You know, this, this happens, I, I'm, I'm sure this happens in pretty much every city across america but like in pittsburgh they're going through that <clears throat> you know there's um the, the the strip district is getting redone and and well, i mean when i was a kid that used to be a place for like those boutique shops and and you would go and you you know there'd, there'd be farmers markets there and things of that sort now it's like this fucking weird indoor outdoor mall thing that's been set up like it it just it looks it looks too sanitized and and there's an article that that I was reading about how they were trying to like incur they were leading along some local um, bookstores and craft stores and things of that sort to be a part of it but then just gave it to you know some store out of New York City to expand and put put into uh, you know branch out into a Pittsburgh market essentially 
so and it's this Chicago developer. They're not even from Pittsburgh, right? So a lot of people, um, a lot of people got mad. A lot of people got upset at uh, at at this at this developer. But but nobody like none of the city officials are doing anything about it. You know, and I and I doubt any any even the new mayor of Pittsburgh is going to do anything about it, especially if that new mayor is pro capitalist, because this is going to make the city money. Because a bunch of suburban people who, again, are fine with gentrification because it gets the icky pores out of the way, are completely fine. They don't really care. Same thing with this. The Israelis are fine with doing this. And America is fine with the Israelis doing this. They're completely fine with it. They do this in their own country all the time. So why wouldn't they be? Why wouldn't they be okay with displacing entire groups of people so that nationalistic settler, settler colonialism can take place and help capitalism? Oh, look, we can make this neighborhood look posh and rich and, and sell it to some people that have a lot of money that can spend more money. That's what it all boils down to. It's not about can, you know, it, it's not about how many people can we have sheltered. Give the basic human right of shelter to. This displacement is fine with the U.S. They're a okay with it. That's how this. That's how this country became what this country is. It expanded westward, taking land from natives and Mexicans, and becoming this huge, wide, you know. 2,000 plus mile country. That's what they're trying to do with Israel. Now, granted, Israel is far smaller than America, but that doesn't make what they're doing, you know, less atrocious. And they brought up the the holidays as well in that last little clip, right? They brought up the holidays. Um, the the media uses the holidays, especially Western media uses the holidays, and it frames it in this light of, uh, oh well, well, you know, this is when this is when Muslims preach violence. They they incite violence at those holidays. So so that's why it's important to strike them during holidays. Which is crazy because it's like that's so you're fine with like you're fine with people getting accosted on their most holy of holidays, most holy of days. That, that so if somebody attacked like if somebody took the war on Christmas seriously and attacked you know some Sunday services, this country would be in an uproar. There would be an immediate war called on. They would be looking for somebody to go to battle with. But if Palestinians resist, if Palestinians defend themselves, oh, act of terror. Oh, you can't do that. See, inciting violence. See that? That's what they frame it as. It's bullshit. Okay, so this one is one of the longer clips that I'll play. Almost immediately, English language news media, especially U.S. outlets, chose a side under their guise of objectivity. And we can see it in the language that's been used. State-sponsored illegal force displacement became evictions, something Mohammed al-Kurd, a resident and writer from Sheikh Jarrah, called out on CNN. To start, it's not really an eviction. It's forced ethnic dis displacement, to be accurate, because an eviction implies legal authority. While the Israeli occupation has no legitimate jurisdiction over the eastern parts of occupied Jerusalem under international law. Israeli police attacks on Palestinian Muslim worshippers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque became tensions or clashes a term which not only erases the genesis of the violence an occupying state force inflicts on the people it occupies, but also obscures the power imbalance between Israelis and Palestinians. A decades-long Israeli occupation of Palestine and a now-recognized system of apartheid becomes a conflict, another term which presents the occupier and the occupied as equals. The Israeli military assault on Gaza, which at the time of filming this has claimed over 230 Palestinian lives, becomes a war between a heavily armed country 
and the people living on a tiny strip of land that it occupies. And if the war isn't with Gaza, then the war is with Hamas, whose military wing is up against one of the world's most technologically advanced and well-funded militaries, which is also the only country in the region with nuclear capabilities. And I'll throw it to John Oliver to quickly explain why Hamas rockets and Israeli bombs just don't make for a meeting of equals. The use of the phrase tit for tat war in a conflict where you just pointed out one side has suffered over 10 times the casualties. Something which speaks to both the severe power imbalance at play here and how that often gets obscured by how we choose to talk about it. In addition to sanitized language, there is also the passive voice, which suddenly becomes dominant in an industry where that's a big grammatical no-no. Palestinians aren't killed by Israeli bombs. They die. Israelis, however, are killed. Buildings aren't destroyed by Israeli airstrikes. They collapse after Israeli airstrikes. And mainstream coverage, even when it's good, like the last week tonight's segment, still often presents current events devoid of seven decades of context. The recent events in Jerusalem can't simply be reduced to a flare-up or an escalation. Describing these events in this way and demanding a restoration of calm, whatever that means, diminishes the greatest act of violence that is inflicted on Palestinians on a daily basis. Okay. <clears throat> the occupation. All coverage and context needs to go back to that. So, uh, again, the, it just collapsed, right? Oh, the building fell. How did it fall? It doesn't matter. No, no, it does matter. <laughs> buildings don't just fall. That's not that's not the point of what buildings are, right? Um, I will say that I haven't watched John Oliver in in a long time. I used to I used to try to watch his stuff. Um, because I liked it. I enjoyed I enjoyed what he was doing on on his show. I thought it was kind of interesting. But I stopped watching him uh, after the bullshit he pulled with Venezuela, uh, and uh, when he like just unnecessarily attacked Jill Stein. Um, so I stopped watching him there. But but even he can kind of point out the the power discrepancies between these two countries, right? Like one ha one country, Israel, has one of the most advanced militaries on the planet while the other one is is you know like their civilians are are working with rocks and slingshots and they don't have uh, very good rockets and even if their rockets do make it into tel aviv or anything like that they have one of the strongest anti rock military like anti-rocket defense systems in the world so there is a power dynamic that is never really addressed in U.S. media or Israeli media. Um, it, it 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 is a it is a it is a lot of mental gymnastics to pull in saying we are all victims, but also we are the superior race. Th that's that's a lot of that's a that's a lot of mental gymnastics to be like I'm the victim, but I'm also the strongest ever. We're the best. We're the chosen people. We're the best, right? America kind of believes the same thing. It's like, oh, American American culture is 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 always under attack, but but it's because it's the best. It's because it's the strongest. It's because you can't shake, uh, you know, a, a, a American exceptionalism and shit like like it's it's done for a reason. It, you know, this mental gymnastics is done for a reason, but it what it what it covers up is is the is the discrepancy in power is the discrepancy in in military prowess <clears throat> that Israel has over Palestine and like she points out you know you can't you can't accurately talk about this stuff without understanding some of some of the history uh of the region Right. Like it's just you, you, it's just too difficult to do it. Like you can't be a media critic without understanding history. Right. You can't see how they're twisting the words, how they're twisting the narrative and, and how they're putting the propaganda in front of us without knowing what the truth actually is, without knowing how this stuff came about to be. Because most people don't. Most people don't look into the history of, of Israel and Palestine. Most people don't look at the history of, of it going all the way back to World War One. 
I mean, when I wrote my 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 Kashmir piece, the reason I wanted to do a historical look at it at first is because we're not going to understand what the fuck is going on and why it's going on without understanding the 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 you know decades of history behind those actions. Every time an event like this happens, the the corporate media kind of makes it appear like, oh man, this. Oh, this crazy thing just happened. Isn't that nuts? It's so scary. Oh boy. It just, this, what a Tuesday. Like it's, you know, but this is, this is 70 years of oppression. This is 70 years of people living in an open air prison. It's 70 years of apartheid. It's, it's just, that's, that's where a lot of the animosity is coming from. And people can't relate to that because, you know, think about it. If, if somebody comes in and displaces you from your home and, and either makes you homeless or makes you live in an open air prison, how are you going to feel against that group of people? Are you going to be like, oh, man, boy, that Hitler sure was terrible. It, no, you would be like, yeah, Hitler was terrible. Why are you doing almost the exact same thing? Why are you doing a version of that thing? But they don't. But they don't ask that question again because because they they try to they try to distance you from the actual history of what happens. That's that's part of um that's part of how propaganda works. And and again, that's the the the, the great thing about this video is it really shows you and articulates how exactly corporate media is propaganda. So anyway, let's keep going with it. Chikjara does not exist in and of itself. It exists in the context of seven decades of settler colonialism, whose purpose has been the dispossession and subjugation of the indigenous population. Attacks on Al-Aqsa don't exist in and of themselves, but are part and parcel of a long existing Israeli strategy to dismantle and discourage Palestinian mass gatherings. This is especially true in this particular case, when the attack followed protests against the continuing state-backed Judaization of Jerusalem by forcing out the Palestinian population. And we can't talk about the West Bank without talking about how among almost 3 million Palestinians, there are more than 700,000 illegal Israeli settlers. We can't talk about Jerusalem without pointing out how the Israeli controlled city has a policy of keeping the ratio of Palestinians to Israeli Jews 40-60. That's an official policy to ensure Jewish dominance of the city. And then Gaza? We can't talk about Gaza without mentioning that it's a small strip of land the size of Detroit home to 2 million Palestinians. There is no official border that demarcates it, and it's under siege from Israel by land, air, and water. Of the 2 million Palestinians in Gaza, 1.4 million are refugees who were expelled from or fled their homes due to the ethnic cleansing campaign carried out by Jewish militias before Israel's creation in 1948. These refugees, like all Palestinian refugees, were blocked by Israel from ever returning to their homes despite the United Nations demanding that they be allowed to. Now, American mainstream coverage of it. Okay. <clears throat> so, again, I want to kind of point out that these are the kind of laws that you see under a theocracy. That's, that's what it is. One group of people that believe in one particular religion have all the rights, gain the manifest destiny of, of God, and this other group of people has to leave their home so that the chosen group of people can do whatever the fuck they want with the land. Now, this this isn't to say that, hey, we don't want Jewish people to be in this part of the country. That's not what the, the media will try to conflate those two things to be the exact same thing. But that's that's not what people are saying. They're saying that the Palestinians have the right to be there, and if the Israelis want to be there as well, if the Jewish Israelis want to be there as well, they can be. They can work together to be in that space together. That is a possibility. A lot of different countries have done that successfully. Kashmir was one of them. Kashmir was all about coexistence. That's what I talk about in the videos that I made about Kashmir. And and the reason I bring up Kashmir in, in the... In the um, uh, the, the the Palestine argument here is this is very likely this is very likely the future of Kashmir, very likely the future of Kashmir. A theocratic rule where a where where they manufacture a Hindu minority, put it into law, 
claim that that's what the law needs to be for safety, for protection, for, you know, uh, for for Indian rights or or whatever fucking excuse that they're going to use. And then force the Muslims out, displace them or say, hey, you're Muslim, go to Pakistan. They got the, the religious symbols on their flag. They're clearly an Islamic nation. Go there. This is not this is this is not for you guys. That's not how democracies operate. That's how theocracies, I will say authoritarian theocracies operate. They're fine with displacing groups of people because they see one religion as lesser to the other. And you can say these are complicated issues, but they're only complicated uh, when you want to believe that the oppressor has a valid reason to say certain things. And and they and they quote have a valid reason to be oppressors. No, no, they have to, right? It's the same thing as uh it's the same argument as, well, Hamas was in that building. What are we supposed to do? Oh, this dangerous terror group is using human shields. What are we not supposed to kill the human shields? Fucking yes. They continue to use reasons like, well, Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel has a right to exist. No one's saying that it doesn't. No one's saying that Israeli Jews can't be in that land. We're saying stop displacing the Palestinians that have lived there for generations. Stop destroying these people's lives. Stop taking over their homes. That's not a defense. Oh, it's complicated. It's really not. You're you're adding di- you're adding weird little reasons. You're twisting the meaning of what people are saying to say, "Hey, Palestinians have human rights." Oh, so Israelis don't. No, no one's we're we're not saying just because here here's the fun thing about human rights is they're for hu- all humans, all humans, all of them. Every single one of them. Just because one group of humans gets a certain amount of rights doesn't mean that a different set of humans have to lose theirs. That's not how it works. But that's the justification that they use in order to push these theocratic rules in place. All right, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to play the, the rest of this video and 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 we will wrap this song bitch up. Israel of occupied Palestine isn't surprising when we look at how closely aligned the media establishment is with not only the American government, but its foreign policy interests. It's the same reason that this happened, that the American mainstream uncritically reported and amplified an Israeli strategy to make Hamas think that the military was going to do a ground invasion. And Israeli and pro-Israeli voices and perspectives dominate cable news shows and even daytime shows, despite the vast amount of Palestinian commentators available. Do the Palestinians, even though they don't have a state, do they have the right to defend themselves? What do you mean? They have the right to defend themselves from who? We are not attacking Palestinians. What we have here is a terrorist organization, Hamas, what that on guy one says side, is horrific. and our ally, We're Democratic not ally, Palestinians. Uh, Israel, on the other side. And therefore, we, we have a responsibility to support Israel and its right to defend itself. And it's not surprising that the New York Times, the leading newspaper of record, continues to use language and reporting which at best, equalizes Palestinian and Israeli violence and suffering, and at worst, dehumanizes Palestinians. Since 1984, every New York Times Jerusalem bureau chief has lived in a West Jerusalem home that was ethnically cleansed of its inhabitants during the Nakba, which is what Palestinians call what happened in 1948. And the Times also has had staff and reporters covering the occupation in various capacities who have children who served in the IDF. How many Palestinian Jerusalem bureau chiefs has the Times had? How many Palestinian staff reporters does it have on the ground? Or how many Palestinian ground reporters does any other major American newspaper or cable outlet have on the ground? Now, everything that I just laid out might make the situation seem so incredibly dire. But this time, there has been a bit of a shift. This is a war crime. Um, This is ethnic cleansing. You know, they can do all their propaganda and say that this is a private land dispute. But looking, it doesn't take much looking at the history of this country and 
thing how this country came about. It came about by um, stealing people's homes and stealing people's lands and destroying people's villages. Palestinians are at best third class citizens in the nation of their birth. The idea that it's even remotely controversial to call what Israel has imposed on Palestinians a form of apartheid is laughable. United Jerusalem is a city that is a success story and will continue to be so. Okay, well, according to uh, Israeli reports, only 7% of the building permits issued in Jerusalem over the past few years have gone to Palestinians. They make up 40% uh, of the city's population. What we need is more than the secession of violence. We need sanctions against Israel in order to put pressure on one of our time's apartheid regimes. For the record, destroying a civilian residence sure seems like a war crime, regardless of whether you send a courtesy heads up text. Bolstered by the recent Human Rights Watch report, which supports what Palestinians have said for decades, terms like apartheid and ethnic cleansing have made it into the mainstream. And while there is a long way to go to significantly shift the narrative into one which doesn't give equal time, space, and moral footing to the occupied and the occupier, there are some suggestions that we are witnessing a change. And there is a part of me that wonders. In addition to the rising tide of progressive politics, how much of a role did the reckoning over racism in the U.S. media last summer following the George Floyd protests have to play in some of these changes? What we're seeing today is that Israel's structural racism and violence are no longer deniable. And both those who watch the news and those who make the news are boldly challenging the media and political establishment to call out Israeli apartheid and to stop protecting it and enabling it. Pretty solid video. Pretty solid video. Uh, and, you know, that is the thing that kind of gives me a little bit of hope. That is, that is the thing that kind of gives me a little bit of hope, right? Is uh, is the fact that so many people marched on the street. So many people started talking about this. So many people started getting it out. And at that point, it became unignorable, right? Mainstream media had to cover it. Mainstream media had to start talking about it. And the same networks, the same networks that were having people that were like, oh, um, you know, I mean, we're not really attacking Palestinians. And it's like, well, who are you attacking then? Hamas? Because I'm pretty sure that's the government that was elected by Palestinians. So kind of feels like you're attacking Palestinians. If somebody was to attack Joe Biden, would you feel like that wasn't an attack on an American? If somebody did that, if somebody attacked, if the January 6th fucking people were like, oh, we weren't attacking Americans, would everybody just go, oh, that, oh, man, okay, we thought you were, <laughs> that's our bad. Oh, those weren't Americans? Oh, shit, that's, that's our bad. Sorry. We misunderstood because it really fucking seemed like you were attacking Americans. You know, those elected officials that Americans elected into power. Well, I'm going to put that in quotes, but or the idea of, of these elected officials being elected by people to put, to put them in power. Oh, so once they're elected, they're not American. So it's fine. Same thing with this. Oh, who are we attacking? We're not attacking Palestine. We're attacking Hamas. It's different. Oh, you mean the people that the Palestinians elected? Those the, the same networks that play those are now playing, you know, uh, are bringing in Palestinians being like, hey, this is a war crime. This is apartheid. This is ethnic cleansing. This is what that is. Now, despite that, you, you do have people like Deborah Messing who are going to be like, don't say ethnic cleansing because it's because it's anti-Semitic. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Israelis forcibly removing Palestinians from their homes is not that. <laughs> you know, oh, it's anti-Semitic because it's OK when Israel does it. Uh, these, I mean, the mental gymnastics you have to I'm, like my head hurts. I'm trying like even doing this joke, my head hurts. I'm going to drink some water. I'm going to hydrate. Maybe maybe that'll help. But that's the positive. 
and these look the, the these these fucking corporate mainstream media outlets didn't just gain a conscience okay they didn't they didn't just go they didn't just look at what was going on and go oh bro, that's what's been happening no they they saw what was going on in the streets they saw what the public opinion was they started seeing that it it was it was changing and it was shifting so now we have to have these conversations same thing happened last year all of a sudden to fund the police started becoming a a point of discussion where they had to bring lefty socialists onto their fucking networks to talk about what that phrase fucking means because they couldn't control what the public thought anymore the public is now dictating what the media should be talking about and what and and the laws that legislators need to pass now i know i know ron's brought this up ron actually brought this up when i did get your news on with ron maybe a month or two ago about you know the best that we might get from joe biden is that he's going to be an fdr type person or not sorry not an fdr person um that was that was a slip of the tongue my bad uh, but more of an LBJ, different three letters, uh, <laughs> more of an LBJ, right? Where public pressures, I guess in that term, in that sense, maybe a little bit of FDR too. Uh, but public pressure got him to put some like progressive policies in place. But same thing with FDR. FDR didn't pass the, the New Deal and the Wagner Act because he he was like, boy, I feel like unions need to be. No, he saw the amount of strikes that were happening in 1934. I mean, there were general strikes all across the country and they were not going to stop. In fact, he in fact, his administration was OK with sending national the National Guard with armed with with with, with um, uh, you know, live bullets, live ammunition firing at strikers. And until he saw that, oh, they're not backing down. Oh, they're 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 picking up the canister of tear gas and throwing it back. Oh, they themselves are now getting armed. Okay, before I have an all-out war with with the populace, I should probably do something less bloody, right? That's so. I guess in that term, Biden could be could be like FDR, but the the concern I have <clears throat> is that things might have to get worse. Things might have to get bigger. Things might have to get more extreme and loud before someone like Joe Biden actually understands what needs to be done because we saw a year of protests and one police officer that may be getting a sentence to go to prison hopefully forever hopefully for the rest of his life but we're not getting it to fund the police bill we're not going to get a, 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 a any sort of uh, Black Lives Matter bill. We're not going to get a let's fund mental health services and 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 other, you know, like uh, social services and domestic abuse services and, you know, put more put more money into communities of color and after school programs and help working moms. We're not really going to get a lot of that. We're not seeing that happen. He's giving us breadcrumbs. Oh, working moms are going to have a hard time coming out of the pandemic. So we should help them a little. Here, I'll throw you this. Is that good? Are you guys done? I threw you a fucking piece of bread. Are you good now? Get the fuck out of my face. That's Biden. That's Biden's attitude towards these things. Medicare for all, same things. 72% of the country, according to a Fox News poll, a Fox News poll, a Fox News poll. Are liberals getting it? 72% of people that watch fucking Fox News said they're good with Medicare for all. And he said that he would fucking veto it. The closest thing he did is delay the arms sales after he saw the massive amount of demonstrations. And really what they want is for this story to fade into the mist. And then he'll sell the weapons and something else horrific will happen and then the story will come back and then they'll try to fucking squash it again. So the only thing that I can say is this is not the time to let up. 
on any of this shit. If you're if you're a fucking Medicare for all activist, push that shit. If you're out there fighting police brutality, push that shit. Get get organized. Get marched. Get, start mar get marched. Uh, start marching, right? Because people like me will fucking cover it and amplify it and get more get hopefully get more people to support and get it out. Get get more people to join the cause. If you're if you're a uh, 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 an increase the minimum wage person. Same thing. That's the way we get him to 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 realize that hey, we don't you don't really dictate what's right and wrong. You you your your moral core is 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 just a, a fucking garbage can on fire. So I'm excited to see that kind of stuff. That's that's what gives me a lot of hope. Um, so I hope that kind of keeps. I, I hope I hope we keep the pressure on because we're going to have to keep the pressure on. This dude has been waiting to get into this office to destroy social services in America and help the rich and create this. He, if you've seen the movie Elysium, that's what he wants to create. All right. We're going to look at your comments and wrap this up because this became a little bit of a longer stream than, uh, than I anticipated it to be, I guess because of the uh, because of the little bit of uh, technical issues. I'm glad you guys were able to hear it. That's that's I guess that's really what's important there. Um, Holly says they don't give warnings. Yeah, I've heard that too. And and again, it's like there, there's reports coming out that they do give warnings. They don't give warnings, regardless of whether they don't or or do give warnings. Like what they're what they do after that is just is horrific and is a war crime. Uh. CG, it's frightening the language they use to uh, it, they the language is one of complete extermination. Yes, that is that is the language um, that they that they're talking that, that that they're talking about. And again, India does the same thing. It's not just Israel, so uh, it's kind of commonplace for them to 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 do some stuff like that. Holly points out that the Palestinians have uh, lived in those homes for generations too. Uh, third holiest site in Islam as well. <laughs> CG, uh, and I guess all the good Christians forget their white Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Palestine. <laughs> he looked, he he would look Arabic. I used to have a joke uh, about about how uh, the historically accurate Jesus would get stopped at uh, at, uh, at the airport uh, by TSA, and uh, people would get mad about that. <laughs> uh, Darren with Franklin, it's always seen it, it, it has always seemed odd that Christian nationalists would want Jesus put in a cage uh at the border because he's brown and didn't speak English. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But not in their mind. It's all it's it's a white Jesus. That's who's coming back, baby. When, when he comes back, he'll be he'll be white, pristine, pure, pure Jesus. That's what we want. We want that pure Jesus, baby. <laughs> They hate us for the for our free dumb. Ha! That's a good, I like that, Holly. That's a pretty good one. Uh, having a hard time enough just to, keeping landlord from ejecting me. Can't imagine what they're going through. Uh, yeah, and I'm not trying to dismiss or or diminish what's happening in the states in terms of uh, the eviction epidemic that we're going to see and and how that's going to affect COVID numbers and and uh, probably create a new wave and all that kind of shit. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's horrific. It's awful. Regardless of whether you're in Gaza or, or, or in, in the United States g being displaced because of economic means or because there is a, 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 a settler colonial state that is trying to push you out. It's all, it's fucking terrible and, and is a crime against humanity and no country that values human rights would do something like that. Uh, I pointed out to a Zionist dinner with Franklin says I pointed out to a Zionist that the Bible says the Canaanites were the first. His reply that we killed every man, woman, and child. He gave it to them the moral right of the indigenous. Wait, so he said that the Canada, uh, you you said the Canaanites were first, and his reply was that they killed every man, woman, and child within the Canaanites, and that's why it's. It's theirs. It, I yeah. Is that I, that's that's how I'm reading it. If I'm if I'm wrong, let me know. But that's pretty fucked up. 
CG says they don't see them as human. And that's, yeah, and, and that is that is the problem, right? I mean, you hear it of, of people just go, uh, well, we're not killing Palestinians. What? You, you know, or, or, or you see the way that the Israelis talk and they talk to them like they're third class citizens at, at best. Uh, you know, so it's 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 pretty it's pretty fucking terrible. Um, backspace over the stuff about throat punching. Yeah. Uh, FDR FDR saved ca capitalism. Yes, he did. He he established uh, he well, he gave he gave the Fed more power. Um, he killed a postal bank, which was going to be the rise of major public banks in America. Uh, he also let the Fed uh, take the dollar off of the gold standard and be backed by fucking nothing. So he wasn't. I mean, that's the thing is like people kind of hold FDR as as this glorious president, but don't realize the history that surrounds him. Uh, about, yeah, Joe Biden's also not going to abolish qualified immunity. That's the that's the other thing that I forgot to mention. I I, I was like, am I missing something? That's that's the one qualified immunity. He's not going to abolish that either. And the Supreme Court won't even look at any cases regarding uh, qualified immunity, but they are considering looking at some cases to overturn Roe v. Wade. Uh, I'm sorry to say, I think you're right. As as bad it is, it'll have to get worse. As long as they have us fighting each other, uh, it isn't bad enough for them. Yeah, I think that's that's the problem is is the propaganda is still pretty heavy. There are there are still a lot of people paying attention to corporate mainstream media and taking it as gospel. There's a lot of people that still think, you know, the, that politicians are their friends and they deify them. There's and and that's part of the issue. Um, all right. Da, 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 da. There's there's you guys are leaving a lot of. Uh, a lot of comments. Oh, this is this is the clarification of of the earlier comment. That's that, which is totally understandable because you only get you only get a certain amount of words on YouTube comments. Uh, sorry, Chris, I really had to cut it down and didn't read it through. But yeah, you got it. He's he, he thought it gave them the right to claim to be the indigenous. Yeah, which is exactly what the what America did, right? It, it, it's it's the principle of manifest destiny that just lets them fucking do whatever. Um, and and that's the problem, and that's also part of the reason why I think America supports Israel is because Israel is 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 just basically a shining example of what America did, it, and it validates and justifies all of the horrific human human rights violation um, <laughs> that America has also done in order to be a fucking country. Uh, so yeah, um, Rob, thank you for joining the stream uh and and thank you for thank you for saying i uh you, you'd be tipping if you could find the button i wish i knew where the button was but i i i, I don't <laughs> but i think if you go a, a, onto my channel directly that it's it's right at the top it says leave a tip or anything and i very much appreciate that that's very kind of you um so uh yeah thank you for tuning in and uh and and that is where we will wrap things up um Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. 
all the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.